on live we're here with another episode of the rock fantasies files tonight we're going to talk about all things man of war man of war we're an american heavy metal band from upstate new york got to see them early in their career at the chance of poughkeepsie i believe my memory's a little hazy it was either on battle hems or into glory ride but my ears are still not the same from that <laughs> night at the chance <laughs> and uh Tonight, I've asked my guests to pick out their top five favorite Man of War songs. We originally were three. We had a couple of people bail out the last minute. And uh, possibly a question for Ross or for Mike, who joins us from Ross the Boss's band also. And uh, Sympathy, X, Sympathy X, I can't even talk. So joining us tonight is Dan Gonzalez, guitar from Possessed and Gruesome, celebrating 10 years in Possessed today. So uh, congratulations. We've yeah, got uh, John McAtee, of course, from Incantation. I've got Mike LaPon, bassist from Ross the Boss and Symphony X, who I just mentioned, and Ryan Scow is from the Sea of Tranquility, out to Valley Squares, and a huge Man of War fan. Uh, welcome to the show, Ross. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here. And uh, who wants to start off tonight with their Man of War picks? You gotta, do we have a victim? I could start first. What the heck? All right, John. I got the confidence from Man of War, you know? Cool. <laughs> Um, but yeah, first of all, I want to say it's, it's, it is truly an honor for me. I mean, um, kind of, I'll tell you a little bit of my story, just kind of average, say 13 year old kid in the early eighties, you know, just picked up a man of war. I'm just thought the, uh, hail to England. album just looked so damn cool that, um, I just picked it up. And once I heard it, it was just, it just was mind blowing and it just, just connected with, you know, basically an awkward teenage kid that didn't fit in with all the other kids in school and just something different, you know, and just, it just totally, um, it, I, it just, it, it just connected with me. I mean, the lyrics about being proud to be metal and just, you know, tell the world to piss off. I mean, that's <laughs> exactly what I was thinking at that time, you know, and I, and I didn't know, cause I lived in a town full of like more like guidos and uh, jocks and stuff like that. And, you know, there were some heads and stuff, but I didn't fit in with any of them. Like I was into metal and stuff. So, you know, it's, it just really meant a lot to me. And I just, from then, you know, just, you know, picked up uh, into glory rides and, you know, the other al early albums and that stuff just really, um, man, it just really meant the world to me. I mean, there, there's so, so many great songs and, even though I kind of um, made the rules on how I want to do the um, the picks or whatever, I kind of did it a little bit different because to me, there's two different kind of Man of War songs that I, that I really like a lot. And I like, you know, of course the Anthem songs are great. I mean, you know, like I said, especially coming from, you know, it brings me back to being a young kid again. And it just reminds me of why I'm doing this in the first place, you know, because we love metal. It's not, you know, no, no bullshit. It's about just loving the music, being honest and being true and being proud of that, you know? So uh, to me, that's, you know, it, it's really great. But then there's like the epic songs, you know, that are just like, holy fuck. <laughs> I mean, just amazing. I mean, at, at that time, especially, you know, to hear stuff that was that, uh, you know, interesting, that much feeling. I mean, you know, I mean, the vocals were amazing. I mean, so anyway, um, so like some, some of the ones that really impressed me that I would put on my list is I'd have to say a bridge of death is one of the songs. I mean, that song is just like, holy hell. I mean, just, just, uh, when Eric Adams says, you know, I, I know the one who waits Satan is his name <laughs> across the bridge of death. I stand in flames. I mean, I was just like, Holy crap. You know, I'm a 13 year old kid. And I'm just like, this speaks to me. You know, this is what <laughs> fucking metal is all about. You know, mm -hmm. just, you know, just going for it, you know? So <clears throat> that's a big one for me. Um, I, I'm trying to think another song that really, um, I really like a lot, which is more of the epic kind of song is, uh, March for Revenge. That's a great one, too. I mean, just uh, just I mean, it's a I guess it's the theme here where I like death and hell because, you know, just that whole ride, <laughs> ride, ride up from hell. It's like even you hear that, you're just like, fuck, yeah, you know, like metal fucking rules and fuck you if you you don't like it, you know. And, you know, I, I understand there's people out there that think it's cheesy or whatever. But for me, it's like metals in my vein. And that shit just is, means the world to me, you know. And uh, I mean, I really, I mean, it's hard to say because I mean, the Dark Avengers, great, you know, Revelations, great. I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, 
Mountain is great. I mean, so many, it's, you can't even say, but uh, I picked Revelation as probably my third, um, you know, third in the list of like more epic songs that are really the best, but it's, it's impossible to say because really uh, all those, uh, all those are, are phenomenal. But when it comes to like the, um, the more like anthem songs, um, I really like, um, like, I don't know, let's say like, Armies of the uh, Mortal, you know, is a great one. That yeah. one just totally kicks ass. Sure. And, um, you know, the Gloves of Metal is another one that, um, you know, I just hear it and you're just like, you just, like, again, you feel proud to be metal and you just don't give a fuck, you know? And, um, you know, that stuff is what helped me become the person that I am now as, as a musician. Because, you know, all musicians, especially you're doing something like metal, you start off and, nobody gives a crap about what you're doing and people don't believe in you and don't think you could do it and think you're crazy for trying, you know, but being listening to music that's inspiring, like especially the early uh, man of war stuff for me, just gave me that extra push and just made me feel like, I guess I wasn't alone in the world of, um, you know, metal and stuff. But uh, my last pick, so, so I don't babble on too long is um, uh, battle hems. I mean, that song I mean, we, I, first of all, I played that um, in one of my bands. We played it like crap, but it was like, you know, one of the early bands was called Hexus and it just sounded terrible, but, you know, we had heart, <laughs> you know, but the bottom line was, is it was just such a great song and it just brings, it like brings people together, you know, has that vibe to it where, I mean, even, even now, like, like, uh, well, not well now, of course, but I guess I wasn't going to say the story, but I'll say the story now anyway, because it kind of relates to Battle Hems is in the 2000s when we were touring and stuff, you know, we pl I play in a death metal band and death metal wasn't so popular at the time, but we still, you know, we kept that man of war spirit of just doing it and just telling the world to fuck off, you know, we're going to do what we want to do and, you know, don't care if people like it or not. But, you know, so it's kind of tough touring, you know, and um, but every night, you know, when we're leaving a club, you know, we'll pop on battle hems as like an inspiration, you know, and just leaving the club, just, you know, you know, listening to that, you know, in moonlight, we ride, you know, it's just such a, it's such a great feeling to, um, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the show was packed or the show wasn't packed. It was like, we knew that we were being true to ourselves and the world could fuck off if they don't like it, you know? And that's, I think to me, that's always been, what I've gotten from Manowar. And that that's, I think what connects Manowar fans, um, you know, and has the passion and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's my rant, but you know, yeah, I, I basically, I love, I love Manowar. Manowar is part of my DNA. It's one of the first underground bands that I got into as a kid. So it, ha it holds a special place in my heart that way. Plus just the music and the lyrics. I mean, I just, just love it. You know, I mean, probably for me, my favorite's probably into glory rides, but I really like, um, the, you know, the first four for me are great. I do like the stuff afterwards too, to some extent, but, um, you know, the first four really are the ones that, um, you know, kick my butt. And I, I have an, I have, um, uh, was it a question I was just curious about, which, uh, you know, I was just curious because, um, you know, being in a, a band like Man of War, it seems like it would be um, difficult to, to work with somebody like, um, you know, um, what do you want? What's the bass player? Um, really? Yeah, so I'm too, I'm too um, nervous now. But yeah, it seems like it would just be difficult where you wouldn't be able to maybe express yourself as much. It, I, I don't know the guy. I only met him a few times. But um, it just seems like, you know, I, I know as far as I'm aware of you and him started the band. So I was just kind of curious, like, you know, how it was to work in that situation. Was it something where your hands were kind of tied on a lot of stuff or would, were you able to really put in the input? Because, I mean, if you look at the writing credits, it's almost all Joey DeMaio throughout the whole, um, you know, most of the records a few are you know um uh, credited to you i'm just kind of curious on that aspect well the the first uh i met joey i was in shaken street i was playing uh professionally since 1975 i went to england uh, shaken street was being managed by uh, black sabbath's manager and blue oyster cult mm -hmm. 
So he got us to tour to open for Bla uh, Black Sabbath in the United Kingdom with uh, Ronnie Dio's first tour. So that being said, you know, Ronnie introduced me, came up to me and said, you know, I got this guy, Joey, on our crew. Joey was on the crew and uh, said, you should check this guy out. You should see how he plays bass. He's very unique. And, you know, I sought him out. We became friends. And then we decided to start a band. Um, me and him and uh, you know so I had already made four major, le major album releases, four of them three with the dictators, one with Shaken Street and um, so when I when we formed the band it was a partnership yeah, Manoa was a 50-50 partnership and on Battle Hymns I wrote most of the songs, I wrote Dark Avenger, Fast Taker Shell Shock, Man of War uh, you know some other one, I don't know Form form, Joey wrote battle hymns. Um, you know, we were just like Lennon and McCartney ate everything. Yeah. You know, and then, but as the band got bigger, he kind of like, kind of starts morphing into something else. It wasn't we weren't true. You know, it's everything was about I write this, you write that. The percentages business got involved. Yeah, you know, businesses gets involved, and you know, and so you know, I. I had so much, so, so much material back then, but not much, you know, what got used was, you know, I did write Gloves of Metal, Secret of Steel, The Oath, um, Kings of Metal, Hail and Kill, you know, stuff like that. So I had my, you know, I, 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 I made a contribution, but uh, the, the, the main thing about Man of War was that I had, my friend was Bob Curry in EMI, and he had seen me perform with Shaken Street uh, on the boardwalk in Asbury Park with Blue Oyster Cult. And uh, he was friends with my wife's friend at the time. And he said, I'm going to do a project and I'm going to do it with you. Bob Curry goes, I'm going to do a project with you. And little did he know what the project was going to be. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, you know, the project turned out to be Manowar. And it, no one in New York City was going to sign Manowar. No one. There's not a single record label would have done what AMI did for us, you know. The amount of equipment we bought, we went to Florida to make the record at Criteria. Uh, we lived, I mean, there's just no what label would, had, would, would do it. It was crazy enough to sign Manowar. But Bob Curry did it. And if it wasn't for my, for my friend Bob Curry, Manowar would never have existed. It would have not existed because no one would have signed Manowar. Well, it seems like the uh, style of Manowar at that time, even though it was you know, heavy metal, it still sounded very original, I thought, too. So it was definitely, definitely different than a lot of the regular Judas Priest uh, and Iron Maiden kind of uh, copies at that time, or, you know. Well, Man of War had a rock and roll edge, you know, the, that was from maybe the rock and roll edge, and, the, and, you know, two sides of the coin, the Man of War was, the epic side and the rock and roll side. Yeah. You know, a yin and a yang, sort of. You yeah. can't just be, you know, and now I think it's just one thing. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So well, we know about that, but uh, so I think that's more refreshing. It, it just keeps your interest in, in, in things. So that's how things started. Well, thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> very cool, very cool. John, are you finished for this? Uh, for yeah, I'm, I'm finished. I babbled enough. I tried to make it short, but that's anyway, all right. I, I, get all, I get all animated. You know? There's not 12 of us tonight. I, get, so I got all nervous. I can't even remember Joey DeMaio's name. <laughs> you as nervous as you. Joey is an, a unique fellow. Yeah, he's unique. He's unique. I mean, I, I, I don't want to interrupt totally, but when, um, yeah, like when I've seen Man of War in recent years, he just talks so damn much during a damn show. I want to hear freaking more songs, you know. And he's talking most of the time. It just kind of bums me out as a fan, you know. I mean, That's I I love the songs, but I want to hear more of them. I, I don't need to hear about you know. The, He's cheesy, um, you know, to cheesy babbling so much. At least in my opinion. If you, if you come to a Ross the Boss show, and Michael Pond will attest to you, uh, we do not talk. We play. We deliver the goods. We play song after song after song, action-packed rock and roll, heavy metal, whatever the, the fuck you want to call it, rock action. That's my, my concept of what Man of War should have always been, is play, no bullshit, no talking, say hello, what the fuck, you know, uh, here's another song, blah 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 blah, and that's the way that's the way I conceive it. And that's there's no frills to, to the Rust the Boss band. There's no bullshit. There's no 
you know, you know, frivolent, frivolent solos. There's none of that. So we, we just get on stage and rip. It's and true. We when we, when I seen you on 70,000 tons, you ripped it. It was the best man work show I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I've seen you like 10 times now. You know, uh, the thing back in New Jersey, the chance that show at uh, the barbecue place, always yep. fucking great. We, we don't, we don't tune down to, 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 we don't tune down to the netherworld on a guitar and our singer can sing, you know, thank <laughs> God. I mean, he's Marcus, you know, um, you know, listen, of course, age, you tune down, you know, singers tune down, but uh, our whistle pretty, Mark is pretty young and fit and he's singing good, but we don't, we don't, we don't get on stage and, and, and bullshit. We don't, we figure why, why talk for 15 minutes when you can play three more songs? Uh, four more songs. The people great, come to great, see, great plan. <laughs> people come to see music. They don't come to see, see us bullshit. Talk to you after the that. show, right? Yeah, I think next. I think next show we're gonna get Mike Lapon to do a speech. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have no, some thank you. Mike next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, you know Mike Lapon is to me the, the greatest bass player playing today. Nice. Uh, no, he is. He's great. There's, there's just no doubt about it. I, I have. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I've seen it every night for so many dates, so many shows. The guy is just. Uh, a, a true professional, true amazing guy. I mean, I've never, I mean, I've, you know, I never seen technique with fingers like that. You know, oh, he plays all you. Joey's, he plays all Joey's parts with a, with, with his fingers, not with a pick. With yeah. a beautiful, <laughs> tone. Nice. With a beautiful, beautiful tone. You know, and he's a, yes. one of the best, one of the best bandmates I could mm. ever have had in my life. Thank you, Ross. Uh, anytime. It's cool. true. So I guess uh, I'm next in line here. So I'm gonna go so, next. And, uh... Go ahead. Be my, get my five picks and uh i mean where do i start man of war i got to see him at the chance and i and my memory's hazy i tried to reach out to a friend of mine that was there it was either on the uh battle hymns or the into glory ride tour at the chance i think it was i think it was the into glory ride uh, i think it was yeah the, st the start of that whole era yeah and my ears you know how when you get home from a concert and those ears, you don't really notice it until you get in bed. And those ears, are... <laughs> but, uh, but I've gotten, you know, I mean, the, the self proclaimed kings of metal, Man of War. When a song comes on at a party, it becomes a hearty, drunken sing alongs that are only rivaled perhaps by like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Like that, my backyard parties in the summer sometimes, and Man of War comes on, everybody's singing along. Just it's <laughs> got that stuff, you know. And of course, me when I, I was around for the beginning, and to me at that time, it was like Conan the Barbarian movies were huge, and that kind of all related with me. So, like John, I went and picked up an album. It's like, well, this cover looks great, and that whole Barbarian theme. Well, not many people were doing back in that day. Well, you got more now with the whole Odin and Van Odin and you know Valhalla and everything else. So uh, I guess my number five tonight, I'm gonna go with Hail and Kill off of Kings of Metal. I love some of the cra crazy lyric and the, the lyrics to me are so epic. Like May your sword be wet like a young girl in her prime. I mean, it doesn't get much hardcore. Than that. And that's one of the best lines in metal. <laughs> it is. And I mean, of course, if you're not into metal, you are not my friend, Dan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh sure. number four, I am going to go with Blood of the Kings off of Kings of Metal also. And number three, I'm going to go with Thor, the powerhead of a silent hammer. Uh, I got to see Ross the Boss's band at Brian's Backyard Barbecue, which was a really memorable gig because it brought metal back to Middletown, which we didn't have a club for years. And having you guys play that barbecue that night, it was like playing a road. And for people that aren't in the area, Brian's Backyard Barbecue was a, was a small restaurant with a small stage. And it was known for like Cajun barbecue food. And he would bring in some of the greatest acts. That, you know, he brought in Ross the Boss, which was on the heavier end of things. Is usually they had like Black Oak, Arkansas, and Johnny Winter, and a lot, you know, Artemis Pyle, and a lot of classic rock. But it was a great metal night for Middletown. And Ryan was up front. I think Nick, who just joined us uh, from uh, Sea of Tranquility, is also here. And we were all there that night and, drive, and we tried to tear that place down. 
I think that was the very first show that it's of the new of the new lineup. I think that was Mike's first show, Mark's first show, and Rhino's first show, right, Mike? Hey, Mike. Yes, I believe I it was. Yeah, I remember you guys saying that before you took the stage. I sacked my band. I sacked the the Keeper True Band. I sacked. I told him. I said, "No, you're fired. You don't want to tour with me. You don't want to tour your 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 young metal musicians that, that don't want to tour Europe." Well, if you're with me, you're going to tour Europe. And yeah. uh, <laughs> so I got guys that wanted to tour, and voila. So. For my number two, I'm going with Kill the Power off of Hail to England. Hail to England could be my fa- probably is my favorite Man of War record if I was to pick out albums. And uh, Army of Immortals and Blood of My Enemies, I'm going to give them a tie for number one. So I'm 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 cheating tonight. So very good. Voices. <laughs> uh, Dan walked off for a second. Ryan, I guess we can go with you next. All right. Well, uh, I'm only like around. 38, 39, so uh, I didn't really get into Man of War. I was, still, I was like 13, 14, but it was in the 90s. First album I ever got was Kings of Metals. My first choice is the first Man of War song I ever heard, which was Wheels of Fucking Fire, and I'm, I'm glad you guys played that on the most recent tour. Uh, awesome fucking song. I love that. And that was like, what, January of last year? Last time? That was one of the last concerts I ever saw. Yeah, me too. I was there. Yeah. Uh, number four, yeah. I go with uh, The Oath, which I always fucking love that song. That's like one of my favorite songs to play in the gym forever. That song gets you pumped the fuck up <laughs> oh, every time. So fucking heavy. Uh, then I go with uh, my favorite song from Hail to England, which has got to be Bridge of Death. Same reason John said, just those lyrics. Ah, it's so fucking dark and heavy. Uh, and I, that, that, that like epic shit is definitely my favorite Man of War stuff from those old days. So uh then I go with Secret of Steel from Into Glory Ride. That's like Black Sabbath meets Conan the Barbarian. Just, oh, it's fucking so heavy. And then uh, the title track from Battle Hymn, the song Battle Hymn, just one of the most epic metal songs ever recorded. Ever, Every single yeah. time you hear it, it's like hair on the back of your head standing up. And right. uh, fucking love it. Very uh, good. Cool. Can't, can't wait till this dumb shit's over so I can come see you guys again. Because uh, <laughs> you, exactly. you always play like, New York, New Jersey, the area, you know, me and a buddy of mine, my buddy Craig, we had a habit of uh, coming to see you guys like once or twice a year. We had like, well, uh, we'll see we, boys, we, we, boys, we feel boys, the boys, same way. I know. And we see, uh, we see Ross the boss, and it's like a really couple times a year. Everybody, you know, you can fucking set your watch by. And you guys always kick ass. So, can't wait for Adley well, to come back. I'm, sh- I'm sure Mike LaPon wants to get back out to play. Yeah, man. I'm sick uh-huh. of uh, sitting in my pajamas and eating all day. Yeah. Uh, it's getting a, well, I mean, I'm working like a motherfucker here, but I can't wait to go back to, you know, doing what we do. You know, it's, it, it's been tough. It's really tough. The last show we played was uh, February 24th in Philadelphia for uh, Live Nation. On a mm. Monday night, it was a replay show. It was a redo of the one we missed. But, uh, that was it. And then eight days later, the shit show hit. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, the one at the chance had to be, I think it was maybe the night before that, right? Yeah. yeah it was Sunday night. night. Yeah. That's almost a year ago now. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Isn't that something? That's right. Think about it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Sucks. But uh, I guess uh, we've been making Dan wait for a little while. So Dan Gonzalez from Possessed. And welcome today. Uh, 10 year anniversary. He's been in Possessed for 10 years today. So congratulations. Congratulations. And also in Gruesome. Welcome to the show. He's a big Man of War fan. And uh, what do you got going on there, Dan? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so um, I'm also on the younger side. I'm 38. So I didn't discover Man of War until I, um, you know. <laughs> Uh, early 90s, uh, just a little bit of background. I, I grew up um, listening to uh, Maiden, Judas Priest, you know, all heavy metal. And then somehow I just jumped straight to death metal. Um, but I always, of course, love heavy metal. Um, and the first album I ever heard from Manor was Kings of Metal. And I was just completely blown away because it was just like Maiden or Priest, but like on steroids, you know, it was just like, is this this band real? Like, what the fuck? It was amazing. Um, 
Um, just same thing, like uh, Ryan mentioned, you know, like when, the first time I heard uh, Wheels of Fire, I'm like, holy shit. Like, you know, it's like Maiden, but faster. And, you know, like there's no, no shortcuts, no bridges, straight up metal and fucking play fast and great riffs. So um, definitely I was, I was a fan literally from that day on. Um, and of course I went, you know, and study the back catalog and, you know, there's so many, so many treasures. Um, I guess for my number five, I can start with um, Army of the Immortals. Uh, it's an amazing song. Kill with Power. I fucking love the song. I love those stops, you know, say the chorus. You know, it's it's really super catchy, but super powerful and, you know, heavy as fuck. Um, uh, they will, I would say Sign of the Hammer for sure. Um, then I will go uh, uh, the Triumph of Steel, Metal Warriors. That song is basically an anthem, you know. <laughs> um, um, that wasn't me. That record. You know, Wimps and posers leave the hall. You know. That, yeah, that, yeah. No, I, know, I, I, I totally know that. I totally know that. But that that's cool. song in particular, it, it's, 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 it's become like you know, that's like cool. its own cool. saying. And you know, um, and for, I mean, it's hard to name a favorite song. Because uh, there's so many, but definitely, definitely, I will say Wheels of Fire for me because there's no. I usually listen to music on shuffle, and if that song comes. I, there's no chance I'm gonna do anything else but just to fucking listen to that song from beginning to end. Like that song doesn't stop. It's amazing. Um, um, I, I was just. I remember, you know, like. And even now, just analyzing it as a, as a you know musician, a guitar player, um, you know, like back back in the day, I was just um, um, so amazed by like the how tight and the bass were together, like you know, it was something something that I was I was very impressed at that time, um, and you know that that beat, you know, it's a fast song for sure. Um, super catchy hooks. And I did, there's one thing that I love about that song that, um, Ross, that you do is that, um, you know, the song goes, you know, you have those power chords, but instead of power chords, you're doing like, like high string bends. I love that. Like I've never heard any other guitar player like, like a tag, uh, uh, like a main riff like that. You know, like with that creative instead of doing like a low power chord. You know, doing like a G or an A or whatever. Just doing those like high string bands. That was to me. That was like, like wow, it's super creative and sounds incredible. Super tight. So you know, needless to say. That song to me will be forever one of the best, um, and and just kind of like wrap up a little um, with some something that I heard John mention before. <clears throat> one thing about Manor that I've realized through the years, especially touring and everything, Manor is the only band that I could go. You know, I could meet someone like completely a complete stranger it can be somebody you know dude from sweden from bands or whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where they're from i just met him we just started talking you know 20 minutes in the conversation manor comes up and we're like wait a minute like are you a manor fan <laughs> and it's like yeah i'm, I'm what i mean no, are you like a real like a real manor fan <laughs> it's like yeah dude then we started like geeking out on Manor trivia and songs and we start chanting and literally like we just become like long like lifetime friends 
just for that fact. And I, yeah. I can remember, you know, so many band members that I've toured with that, you know, we just met in the bus and, you know, everybody's like awkward or whatever, you know, just drinking a beer. Somebody plays Manowar and then it's just like, wait, you like Manowar? Then the, then the uh. party starts. And just like John says, like, like when I'm on tour with either band, Possessed or Gruesome, like, you know, five out of seven nights, I always end up playing Manowar. Somebody ends up playing Manowar. That's definitely, you know, our party anthems. And yeah. it's, just, it's just, you know, it's an amazing, it's like, it's like a gift for us metalheads, you know? Like, well, I, I tell you what, I mean, as much Manowar love that is out there in the world, there is a lot of Manowar hate, believe me. Oh. Oh, I, t I yeah. totally believe you because here's the thing, like, uh, I think like with Manowar, you either love it or you hate it. Like there's really, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's people that, you know, enjoy Manowar, but like the majority of people either really love Manowar or they're not into it at all. I don't think, so there's, totally there's, any, I don't think there's any middle ground and Joey and I realized that I said, and then the more he kept doing this false metal thing, if you don't like Man of War Force, it's like you're creating, you're starting a Man of War club. And the only ones that could be in our club are the ones that think we're the greatest, we're the kings of metal. And you can't just say, you know, I said, Joey, why, what are we doing? I mean, why are we doing this? I mean, it's like, that's, 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 the, that's the stuff that I couldn't understand because we could have had a lot more fans. And Well, I mean, it, it makes sense, you know, from from your perspective as a as a fan and as a whole, for the future uh, of your 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 professional future. But right. as far as fan, like the you know the fan base goes, I think it really works because, I mean, I feel I can really speak for John, but for what he said that you know he feels kind of the same way. It's kind of like a brotherhood. Like you, you know, if you like Manowar, we're we're automatically friends. Me members like, only. Like, uh, basically. Members only club. Members only club. Yeah. You're not into metal. <laughs> you're not into me yeah. You're not my friend. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Nick, you got something to say down there? Well, Nick, welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> What's up, hey, Nick? It's an honor to be amongst um, such awesome fucking musicians. By the way, <laughs> pretty cool. Thank you for uh, the opportunity, Steve. Same um, here. No, I was going to say, like, I'm, I'm a little bit older than uh, Daniel and, and, and Ryan. I'm 44. And uh, being in high school uh, in, in the, you know, the 90s, 90 to 94, one of the things that, that you were saying about how there maybe could have been more Manowar fans or some people have such a strong negative reaction to Manowar is because just from my little corner of the world without the Internet and all that stuff, like, if you think about it, a lot of the main power, like, metal bands, the icons that we loved At, around that time they started writing lyrics about whether it was like social issues real life stuff they got away from the fantasy but manowar just got more and more into it and didn't apologize for it and you know like that's pretty cool i i yep. think that's admirable especially looking back and i call <clears throat> a lot of shit i call a lot of shit for liking manowar in high school and, and i remember some fucking asshole uh, lecturing me that there's no way that I could like Bad Religion and Man of War at the same time because they're so different. And that's what it was like. I mean, you guys know better than me. That's what it was like back then. Oh, like, wow. Now, I don't think it's like that anymore. Like, Well, no. Can you imagine, imagine liking, liking punk rock and metal at the same time? Holy shit, yeah. Who, whoever would do something like that? <laughs> yeah, I wonder who but It's some shitty suburban <laughs> high school that I was in, you know what I mean, where everybody was judging everybody else. And I found punks to be really fucking judging. I, metal metal fans to me, in my experience, weren't very judgy. But right, right. yeah, well, they're, they're good. There's good and bad in both crowds. No, oh, yeah, I, it was it was worse back in the day. Back in the day, like 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 uh, my dictator fans couldn't fucking believe that I formed a band, man or war. They couldn't believe what I did. I, go, I remember that. You, what were you thinking, Ross? I remember you, that. Right, and like, and then there was a lot of hate. But now, but now, the more time goes by. The more cross genre fans we have, I mean, people love. I mean, you know, love me for they that they bring the dictators records, they bring all my back catalog, they bring the man, you know, the RTB. Everything is everything is sort of like blended into each other now. There's not that hatred of other genres that uh, that I that I uh, encountered back then. 
you know. Yeah. So, so it's good. Cool. Yeah. Dan, did you have any more that anything more to add? Kind of, we kind of. <clears throat> um, well, I was going to say that uh, Nicole is kind of touching a subject there that, like, I'm not uh, exaggerating, but I've met, you know, some some people, you know, that, you know, we bonded just over Manowar at first. Yeah. Um, and we just, you know, we just talk, uh, keep talking about it and, you know, just come out and say, and it's like, like, you don't understand, like, Manowar like save my life as a kid, you know, whether like they were being like bullied or whatever, or they had a, a shitty bring up or something, but they, I, I know a couple of people that have literally told me that, that Manowar saved my life and now, you know, I would never wow. forget it. It's like, I haven't heard anybody tell me that about any other uh, band. I maybe about a, maybe about music in general, but not about like a band per se. And that that to me that speaks volumes uh, 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 about the reach that the band yeah. has. Well, you know, when I hear that, when someone comes up to me and said, "Well, you saved my life because of the because of your music. You brought me through such hard times." I like, I can't talk because I'm about to cry. I, I, I when when people tell me that, it just it, it's so emotional to hear that from from people because they're real. It's a, they're not they're not they're not making it up to me, and I, I and I'm like so honored that 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 the music that I made, uh, you know, could could touch people like that. And I, I you know, it's like you know for all that I went through and all all the bullshit and all the all the arguing and all this, if that hearing that one time is worth it, just hearing it from one fan made yeah. it, made the whole thing worth it to me. I'm sure, and, yeah. and I can awesome. and I continue to to hear it a lot, and it's it's a great honor for me, and uh, you know, uh, if I had to do it all over again, I, I it would I would have done it. I, I wouldn't have changed the thing. Maybe I would have changed a few a little things, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, I would have, probably would have. <laughs> maybe I wouldn't have let Joey get away with so much of the shit he did, but I I would <laughs> for the most part. It, it, it was the, the six records that I did. The, stand the test of time and uh i do you know so yeah. it's a great it's a great honor talking and, and and people just telling me how much they love the music it's it's excellent it's, excellent you, uh, you, there's no there's no amount of money that you can get for that you know so yeah yeah i yeah. do i do have, i do have one question um you guys released uh, uh held to england and son of the hammer in the same year, yeah, in '84, right? Uh, how you know? Do you guys have like a shit ton of songs, and you just decided to split it, or you just recorded an album, and it's like fuck it, let's just record an album another right away? Yeah, like we're, 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 we're back in the day, we had a lot of a lot of music. Like for for, for battle hymns, we recorded uh, like like Defender. We recorded uh, extra songs, you know, and. But then, then we did uh, Hail to England in, in Canada in Phase One Studios with Jack Richardson, and we always would record extra tracks, you know, because we knew we're in the studio, the mics here, the mics, everything's yeah. mic'd yeah. up. Yeah. Let's run well, some right? more tracks. Let's do it. We could do it. So uh, we recorded, uh, you know, extra extra songs, you know, and I, I think the Sign of the Hammer. All we had to add was Sign of the Hammer, you know, for that record. So. It was pretty. Um, we had a lot. It was like a lot of songs, a lot of songs back then, and uh, those were the days. <laughs> cool. Awesome. I was just curious, like you know, material it's, it's wasn't a problem. <laughs> with, material wasn't a problem with Joey and I. It was just. It was something about it. It was like kind of a Lennon and McCartney kind of a thing because the songs that he was doing. You know, we, we did it together. Nothing would have been the same without that combination of musicians, without Scott, without Eric, without me. I mean, we 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 pounded those songs. We pounded those songs together in, in the studio, at our you know rehearsing. You know, yeah, you guys had magic for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And and imagination. You know. Uh, cool, uh, Mike. Maybe we ought to talk to Mike a little bit, Chris. Yeah, maybe you do. I know he's busy yeah. recording some stuff. Um, 
Chris, we recorded we have, another round. A couple of minutes. Listen, in the time we just took, he just recorded another round. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, for me, I was, um, I remember it being uh, 1983. I was 17. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I liked the known heavy metal bands that were big at the time, like Judas Priest and Ozzy. So one day, my friend comes over to my house and he goes, you know, there's a lot of other bands just be besides, you know, Ozzy and Priest and stuff. And mixtape. And on the tape was one of the songs was Metal Days. And, you know, I freaked out because it was so, it was just so great. I mean, the riff was just awesome. Vocals, all it was just awesome. So then I got into Man of War and um, I became a huge fan. And I, I was, you know, I figured that they would just be another arena band, just like Black Sabbath or Judas Priest. Uh, they were that good to me. And um, so I would like, I would go in my room, shut the door, you know, turn, you know, put in the bass and start playing along to the Man of War songs. And then <clears throat> little, did, little did I know all these years later, I'd actually be playing with the actual guy who's writing the songs. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was an amazing, it was very freaky, surreal in a way, but um, Man of War has always been a big part of my life, whether, you know, I had met Ross or not. Um, being a bass player, I always love the big epics. I think one song that just blows my head off is Guyana, Cult of the Damned. <laughs> Just, uh, just unbelievable. Um, another it's great one. Epic, mm -hmm. epic song. Yeah. Another great one I love is Valhalla. Um, yeah. but what's great about Man War, they could go from an epic like that, and then they could just go to the, the simplest bluesy rock and roll kind of riff you can write, like the song Kings of Metal. I love that song, and it's just so simple you know it's basic blues in your face but it's like it's the essence of heavy metal it really yep. is and um so you know it's uh it's a band that it's a cult band really you know i mean they're the songs are uh, iconic they uh they will all stand the test of time and uh, it's a pleasure to to play with ross and I get the best stories in the world. Okay. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about that song, Kings of Metal, we were writing, preparing for the, uh, our second Atlantic record. And we were in our rehearsal room and like Joey and I were talking, you know, we're talking about uh, a lot of the songs, a lot of the songs that we really liked. And one of the songs that we really liked, believe it or not, was Fight for the Right to Party. <laughs> right, you know, and, and that riff was like, you know, that riff. And I go, but then again, I go, Joey, how about something like this? You know, you know, and I, I worked, I, I just, I start playing this riff and, and then we can change it to go to the A and, you know, you know, and then all of a sudden by the end of the night, we had, we had the basis of Kings of Metal, you know, and then he wasn't in the head, the mindset, Oh, we can't play that. No, no, no. You, that was great, you know. It's like that's that's the kind of guy, that's the kind of relationship we did have at one point, and you know where where the where the, you know, where the good came out, you know, a lot more good could have come out, but you know, thank you know just let's let's thank God for what came out, yeah. <laughs> what did come out, but uh, you know, so that's how that came, that that song came out, Kings of Metal, and became the title track of the record, and. Uh, just Eric son sings his fucking balls off on that fucking record and uh, on that song and you know we we played that at the Thirsty Well in Chicago. We recorded some of the people there and Thirsty Well, yeah, baby. The rest is history. You know, Kings of Metal coming. To, you know, you know, calling the van Kings of Metal. I mean, that's pretty. That's balls. I mean, to me, <laughs> that's. You know, calling your calling self entitling your band like we're the kings of metal. I mean, come out. Yeah. So that's <laughs> something to that to, to me. That's the, that's the kind of stuff that rubbed me wrong. I got to be honest with you. I would never, ever 
say that. But in manual world, I guess it's good. You know, in manual world, it's uh, the kings of metal. Uh, you know, it's, it's you know. Well, well, that's what it is. Yeah. That's what people love about it. You know, I guess that's what people love about the band. And you know, I'm, I can't, I can't uh, put it. I can't put him down for that. I think it's uh, okay. It's I, like it's, it's like John was saying. It's like a confidence that the band had that kind of like spread out through the metal scene. <laughs> right, 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 right. There's, there's, there was never a time that we didn't live up to what we said we were going to do. Like, like the fact when we went to England for the first time and Merciful Fate was going to open for us and they just got one, one show of us and they, they, they tucked tail and ran so fast away from that tour, you know. Really? Wow. Yeah. They, cool. they, you know they, they were supposed to do the whole UK tour with us and they played one show. All of Kerrang! was there, all of, all of Melody Maker, or every, all of the press. They wanted to hear what this band was that this band was blabbering for the, you know, all the, all the stuff that came out of the press that we were saying that Joey was saying, we're the fastest, we're the loudest, we're the best, we're the heaviest, we're this, we're that. <laughs> you know, and we did, we were, you know, and, and Merciful Fate, you know, walked into the hall, they saw all our brand new gear that we slaved for and got, and we shipped over to England, everything brand new, the wall of death. The wall of fucking death, wall of voodoo, we called it. In. Mm -hmm. the, and then they, they go, Can we use it? And Joey goes, Can we fuck your wife? <laughs> <laughs> really? The, you know, J J Jack Starr said the same thing with, with Virgin Steel at World War III. They walked into the hall and saw the, this, this, this gigantic stack of brand spanking new tuned, customized gear. And Jack Starr goes, Can we use that? And Joey goes, no, can we fuck your wife? I mean, you know, <laughs> no, no, you're not walking, you're not walking in and cashing in on our hard work. What we did to get that, you know, what we did to get to that point, you know, I agree with him that that no, you cannot use our equipment. Go use your own fucking equipment. <laughs> go borrow every fucking piece of gear you got, bro. I remember him saying, go, go out there, brother. You go out there, brother, get every fucking piece of gear you got, man, and stack that up and you'll play through everything, everything you got, got. you know, it's like. I remember those things, but that's true. Why should we? Why should we give them our? Why should we give them our show? Why should we do that? Yeah. But that's you know that's where I agreed with them. But uh, that's some funny shit, bro. <laughs> cool. That's the fun. That was that was the first night in England. That's when Eric stabbed me with his sword. That was like the first night we were doing battle hymns and uh, you know, challenge the challenge. Da, 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 da. And I got, I got a little too close to that. And I, <laughs> I got a little too close to it. And all of a sudden, I feel this, this warm stream coming down my face. Oh. Right? And I look down on my white guitar, my white SG, and my blood is splashing down on the guitar. And I go, what ah. the fuck? It was a pinprick, uh, the minest, minutest, smallest, tiny pinprick by the by the end of the sword, which is our swords were real. And he got me right there. And you know, you know how a head wounds bleed, right? You ever yeah. you ever have a head wound? Yeah. You know how they bleed? It looked like yeah. someone shot me in the head. Right. It was so the fans were just looking like, what the fuck? We're like blood was just. It was like uh, it was probably to the fans, like it was something that was preempted, like a probably yeah. cooler, yeah. It's, yeah, like rest, like <laughs> man of war it kills. Like, it was like yeah. kills. You know that. It was like it was bands like play man of war kills. That's the yeah, state, isn't it? Yeah. So that was that first night in it. England. That first night, in, that first night on tour in England was unbelievable. Wow. It was yeah. so much energy happening, so much, so much tension, so much energy, so so much pent up. Because we were supposed to go to the Reading Festival the year before, and the and the promoter died, and the promoter's sister, you know, and we just, we have to get to England. We have to get to. Little do I know, with the, the main success came in Europe, but uh, it was the English that got us going. So that's that. That was that story. But merciful fate, and I, I met those guys. I met the guitar players, and I go, why did you guys not come? Why did you guys fuck off on the tour? I don't know. And I haven't gotten, we haven't gotten a clear answer. I go, oh, yeah. I never figure out, guys, why didn't you go? And the, they didn't call, they didn't call anybody. They didn't call the promoters. They just fucked off. So. That's a great, that's a great story. Great story. Oh, yeah.
That's Don't cool. Forget it. So, uh, Mike, do you have anything more to add? No. Um, that covers it, I think. <laughs> what What's like your like one of your favorite? I mean, I guess you kind of told us another like your favorite songs to perform with Ross on stage. Uh, you know, when we when we play Battle Him, it's always no matter how many people are there, it could be a few hundred, you know, or or anything. It's always a magical experience it really is yeah i i think the something real interesting for me is because i used to go see man of war all the time in the 80s mm -hmm. and um i'm in the audience at that time but now i'm on the stage and i get to see how the fans react to the songs from the other side yeah and, um, it's just like you know you could just feel it you know, you could just feel it in the audience. And man, when I'm playing that beginning, I'm like, oh, you better not mess this up, man. This is like a big, everybody's big moment, you know? Um, but I'll tell you, it's, um, it can really choke you up, especially yeah. like the middle part where it's just like the bass alone and vocal oh, yeah. and, the, and the choir, that could really choke you up. It's just like, it's, it's something that, it's something that never gets old, no matter how many times you play it. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's a, it's the song moves people. You know, a lot of all those songs move people. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but now we're on to the better. Now we're on to our own music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, last time I saw you, I know you had some uh, some originals. That was great. You know what? The thing is, is that no matter what I do, no matter what I do. I'll always, I'll, I'll, I have to play those. I have to play some Manoa stuff. There's just, huh. it's like Black Sabbath, going to see Black Sabbath. You got, they're, they're always going to play Paranoid and Iron Man. Yeah. They're just yeah. going to do it. And Tony told me he fucking hates to. He hates it. <laughs> I said, you imagine that? He told me. He actually told me that. I said, you know, I, I, I can understand how you feel. Oliva hates play, Oliva hates playing sirens. <laughs> John Oliva does not like playing sirens and sabotage. Yeah, so he's yeah. like, if you don't do it, if you don't, you know, if, I mean, Hall of Mountain King's one thing, but sirens yeah. and dungeons are some of the older ones. He just doesn't want to do them, but you kind of have to. You get so much hate if you don't do yeah, it. Yeah, if you don't, if you leave one of those albums, oh. especially the album tracks, the ones that are the oh. title of the record, if you leave oh. those off. Oh, and Doro God. used to get that same when Doro would have some if she could have one fan out of 5,000 miss a song and she would lose her mind the whole entire bus ride go to the next city and she would make sure that song like opened up the set the next night oh, really? so that nobody was missing it. I cannot believe we did not play yeah. Warrior Soul last night and the one fan was so upset. So it was like know. Dora was one fan. <laughs> I mean, I, I got those six dictate, I got those six man of war records, and now I have four four Ross the Boss records. And mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of music out there, bro. And it's yeah. like you can never make everybody happy. I could I'll never make everybody happy, no matter what I do. Yeah. No matter what I do. But what I do is I play from my heart, I play from my soul, I give everything that I got because you you never know with these days that you're gonna wake up the next day. And I want everyone to know. If you see me, I give, I'm giving you 100% of everything that I got, as well as my band. Uh, you know, we give everything that we have that night because you know how life is. You never know. You're never going to, you, you may not wake up the next day, especially yeah. we've seen this last year. And um, I just give it my all and that's all I can do. And yeah. you're never going to make everyone else happy. Cool. Chris, I guess uh, Chris or Nick are the two guys we got left. Chris, are you in a hurry to go back? I, I can, I can go because I, I, I got to. I'd hate to be. I'm, I'm usually late for these things, Ross. Uh, so it's like I, everybody's used to be being late, but I was extra late tonight. But it's great oh. to, to be here. I'm happy to. I have so many man of war things. It's going to be hard for me to go. Now listen, I mean, my battery is running out on my phone. Let me see if I can do this, guys. If I, if you lose me, I'll come right back. Hold on. Okay. Randy. he's gone we can talk about him no I'm only <laughs> <laughs> but i i used to do um metal days was was actually the one of the first live songs i ever did with with the club band when i was a kid i love that song that song was just like to me it was just really cool because it mixed a lot of i i was a rush fan 
you know, and I was a Triumph fan, but I also was a metal fan. And then that just had that part of that bass and that that riff in there that kind of connected. It was almost like, you know, that that sort of prog metal into the metal with that tune. And it was just a really heavy tune. So I really love that one. But my first experience with with Manowar personally was I played a Monsters of Rock with Manowar in, in Brazil. And and Ross, you were, you were gone from the band by then, but it was the first time that, that Sabotage had actually did a show with Manowar that I had played. And um, I remember playing the show. I had, I threw my guitar at the TV camera because it kept following me around the stage and the guitar got stuck on the boom can thing and it was getting carried out across the stage. Huh. And, and freaking Joey and, and Eric, they're on the side of the stage watching us and they're watching this guitar get carried off by the camera and it fell down onto the stage and like the guitar exploded and they thought, I got off the stage and they were like, that is the most metal thing I've ever seen because I threw my guitar at the camera. And it was funny then, Manamore played after us and we finished the show and Joey came up to me and he was like, well, Chris, now that we've finished this show and it was very successful, I think we should go get some pussy. And that was the way the first like my first words out of him besides him walking into the the gym at the hotel was like him celebrating the want to go pick up a woman somewhere but, but it was just funny the way the words came out because we just got off the stage and I don't you know if that was just something he was saying to make me laugh but that was what he said but I actually became really good friends with with um with Eric and I've been hunting with him a few times so um, oh wow when people say other bands man of war kills i literally have seen man of war kill so <laughs> it's like, i went to texas with him and uh i, I stayed down there a, a, a few times i was there for a whole week once doing a, um we did a duck hunt and uh, we were hunting hogs and um it was a few other things that we we did when we were down there but it was a lot of fun and i I know, you know, Eric, or I don't know if people know the Louie thing, but I, I know Louie pretty well. And um, it was funny because it was always like, don't let anybody know my real name. But um, I also was kind of almost working with, with Joey as a manager, a personal manager for me on my first solo record. He he kind of actually sat me down and, and gave me a list of he, he sent me like 20 CDs of songs he thought I should write songs like. And he actually did help influence me on a little bit of direction for some of my songs with my solo stuff. But he, if I went into uh, him as a manager, I would have had a lot of a lot of problems, I think, with TSO because he was he was Joe. He was very, you know, very focused and in control. And I think there's a lot of parts of the business world that uh he might have butted heads with some of the people that I, I, I'd worked with, but I had a lot of fun in those in those hunting trips. And I just remember that um, okay. the one the one time when we went duck hunting that uh, we were each allowed to shoot nine, I think it was. And he, <laughs> Eric was not the best shot in the world. So I think out of the, the 18 ducks we were allowed to get, I shot 16 of them. So <laughs> it was, that was it. But um, yeah, as far as the song goes, it's, it's another one of these things where it's really hard for me to pick. I mean, Battle Hymns and Metal Days and, and you know, Man of War, the song Man of War is just one of those things. But it, it's one of those bands, when you see Man of War in front of a large crowd, you get exactly what everybody always says about it. I mean, a lot of people don't understand how much that band has connected with fans all over the world. It's like metal is not just what we see in the United States. And a lot of what people like in the United States is only liked in the United States. So when you have a band like Manowar and you tell people how big they are in some places, they just don't get it. I mean, I remember when um they gave the the poll out for the for Russia. And I don't know if you remember this, Ross, but you guys were um the I think ahead of the 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 pop charts and polls as far as most popular bands in Russia. And I think it was you and Michael Jackson were either one or two or two and one over there in the I country of Russia. That, yeah. yeah, it was just like, that's how big Man of War was in other parts of, of the world. And, and um, you know, Joey, I, I've had a lot of really a lot of really good conversations with him. He's a, he's a great businessman. I, I had a chance to go up and visit his, uh, his whole compound up there. In New York State, and he's just he's he's accomplished a lot, man. That 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 guy in your band, I mean, Man of War. That that's one of those ones where um, they're 
right there in the in the most popular bands around the world for metal acdc metallica man of war i mean it's like it's in that group of that big and i think some people need to go to other parts of the world just to experience that i mean because it is something really special and you don't you don't get it i mean you get it by listening to it but you don't exactly get that what i'm talking about until you see it live so you Not watch really. fifty thousand people know every single lyric and and chant it like it's their own i mean it's it's really crazy and it's a lot to be proud of i mean you, you definitely did something something very special and um in the music and the songs and having one of the coolest guitar player names of all time but i mean that's just <laughs> the way it, the way it is the band was the band was amazing and and i i love what he said about him saying not using your your gear because uh i could definitely see that coming out of joey because he just when, when I, like i said in my conversations with him he definitely was somebody that uh was striving just to let you know you know never let anybody fuck with you and what you've worked with and worked for so yeah like i said you have a lot to be proud of but cool thanks chris that was awesome ross is in the middle of doing a couple of things but we're all continuing the show and adding our oh point. we lost them <laughs> he's still here i don't I, I ross i don't know if ross knows that he's muted or not he may not know that he, he might not know he's muted yeah you're ross you're muted you gotta you hit the mute button on your bottom left side there if you can hear us me and michael uh, hello there you are you're there back. Oh, i'm sorry um <laughs> you know I, i'm just i just have so much to do here i mean okay. it's just you know and i'm it's like i'm pushing exhaustion levels working well, so hard well thank but, uh, you for your time if you have to run off we totally no no and what i what those you know what you just said there about about how big the band is and and uh it's 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 a, it's an amazing the band the, the brand name the brand name is a huge the, yeah. the man or brand name now what what what's going on these past years i'm not gonna i'm not gonna level any criticism of of what they're doing now but uh what I do, what I, what I am sorry about is that Kings of Metal, I wasn't on that tour because that, that tour would have been, in, would have broke this band so fucking big around the world. Um, it would have been Metallica size, I, I believe, if I was there. And, you know, and the, the subsequent live record would have been amazing and, you know, it's just I was out of the band right before the album got released. And I think this is one of the, the greatest eras of, of bad decisions in rock and roll history. And the other one, Mick Taylor quitting the Rolling Stones. And <laughs> <laughs> I think it was pretty bad. To quit the Rolling Stones, you have to be, I mean, I don't know, you know, but, but me, yeah. me getting asked to leave the band has left a bad taste in my mouth my whole life, but that's just a whole other issue. Yeah. But right before the band's biggest record. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to do that. I mean, why just not like play it out and let do the tour, blah, 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 blah. And then, then make this, the, you know, then make a decision before the next record. But you know, that's the way things happen. You know, yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to uh, question that, you know, listen, almost my life, but uh, I, I, it would have been amazing to see what could have happened. Yes, yeah, for sure. Hey, Russ, did, did Scott uh, was out of the band at the same time that you did? Um, no, Scott was in the band. Scott was in the he, band when I when I was out. Because he wasn't he wasn't on Triumph of Steel, so no, no. Right. You know, but but you gotta understand that Triumph of Steel it took six years to make. Yeah. You know, we had done I had done six albums in six years. Six yeah. albums in six years. Yeah. And then it was another six years for the next record. Yeah, actually, yeah. since you left, it's been a super... Can you hear me? After, yeah. after um, you, you left, it seemed like the distance between albums definitely went way, um, you know, way apart from each other. Yeah, you know, and... I mean, like, listen. four, five, six years? I don't, I don't know. Some of them even longer, I think. Yeah. They took their, Recently, they it's been super long. Yeah. You know, <laughs> talk I'm about really stringing it along. On some of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about stringing it along. Well, you know, that's not the problem with me. That's not the problem with Mike and Mark and Steve. And nah. you know, we we put out we put out music and we're proud of our music. And uh, you yeah. know, I'm just uh, 
I was super proud of our last record, Born of Fire. And yeah. uh, there are some amazingly great songs on it. And, um, you, know, I, I always, you know, I'm always going to talk uh, you know, about the, the, the now and the future. Yes. And what I'm doing, what we're doing now, because I think that's, it's, you know, uh, I can't change the past. I can't change the past of Man of War or what I did and what went down, but I'm proud of it. I'm proud of everything that I've done, including the dictators, uh, forming a punk rock band and, you know, and, and then power metal. And then, you know, so in the end, I think that it stands the test of time, you know, and I'll take it to my grave, you know, and that's just the way I am. And we're going to play when, yeah. when, when the green light is given again, me and Mike and Mark and Steve are booking. We're going to play our fucking asses off as hard as we can play to as yeah. many people. We don't care. Small crowds, big crowds, festivals. We don't give a fuck. We yeah. are going to do what we're going to do because we've seen how, how important it is to play music being denied the stage for a year. Who yeah. knows how long it's going to be. And there's a lot of a lot of great musicians out there wanting to play, like all you all you guys. I'm sure you're dying to play. And uh, you know, we live for music. We live for this. And uh, yeah. so uh, <laughs> it's been a trying year, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah. terrible, terrible. You know. And I just. Uh, but we're here, you know, and and we're not going away. And uh, yeah. I'm just. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, at least I get to get up and work here every day because, it, and it's a fun thing. It's baseball and softball. And I even do cricket here. And so I, I have many nations, many people, many religions, all sorts of people here. And it just keeps, it's, it's interesting, you know, oh. and then, but uh, we got to get back to playing. We just got, to, we just have to get back. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. yeah we right. just have to get back, you know, so. so uh... <laughs> Any more man of war questions? I I love to answer. We're gonna wrap <laughs> up tonight's show with uh, Nicholas okay. Franco. We haven't really got to Nick and a welcome. Okay, Nick. I'm sorry to keep you waiting and <laughs> got sorry, any more questions and zip through your top five quick so we can. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, we do. Thank you. No, well, I I got into man of war with Triumph of Steel in in '92, and that was just happened to be the first album that I got. But mm -hmm. then it's funny. I went. I got for some reason. I got Fighting the World after that on cassette. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it. I, that... I guess in certain circles, people, you know, I guess it wasn't considered as good as the other ones, but I love that album. Um, yeah. And then I just went back, you know, backwards from there. And uh, I get, you know, my Blood of the Kings is my favorite uh, Man of War song. It just fucking makes me like, <laughs> I, uh, there may, have, may or may not have been a time where I um, stood up on a picnic table outside of the, um, the power plant club in Baltimore uh, during maryland death fest with a couple guys from from the the band ferret they're from new york city they're like a glam metal band and they in fact one of the guys is i think he's got the man of war ta uh hammer tattooed on his chest so we <laughs> we oh, might have been drunk <laughs> yeah totally. might have you yeah. might have we might have been drunk and we were just screaming <laughs> man of war lyrics uh -huh. um and people weren't that upset i don't think in my mind they weren't upset <laughs> but um i'd have to say uh probably i mean i just jotted this down this is kind of a surprise to me so i was trying to jot down my favorite songs but if i if i had to throw a top five together i'd probably say um blood of my enemies sign of the hammer thor uh black wind fire and steel and blood of the kings black wind fire and steel's fucking <laughs> every time i get drunk there's a 75 percent chance that i just start yelling black wind fire and steel. <laughs> oh yeah we're going to teach them all to kneel but thank you oh. yeah Teach them all to heal, I think. <laughs> Teach them all to kneel. Teach I don't know. I fucking, who knows? Heal, heal or kneel. Both both are good words. Composers. <clears throat> so does anybody have any questions for Ross before we wrap up this episode? Yeah, I want to know how much of your stage you were able to fit in the thirsty whale. That's what I want to know. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, we... that's what I remember, you know, it's funny because I don't know if you guys did it. Thirsty Whale, TSO does a lot of matinees. Thirsty Whale was the first time I ever played two shows in one day because they right. had the underage and the at night. And Chicago was always so big for metal that you had right, to play right. shows. So we did the early show and the late show. But that place, in in all, it's funny because I don't remember the night show. 
because right. <laughs> <laughs> well we had sabotaged back at that point in time me and the Oliva brothers we were up drinking at noon usually so uh -oh, her show Maria. was like getting off the stage <laughs> it was like getting off the stage after the night show for the day show and i don't even rem i don't barely remember doing the night show that's one of the few shows i could actually say that about but i well, just how do you get i mean you're getting so wow that's that's you don't even playing a show you don't even remember playing it because you're so <laughs> yeah well there, there's it was the gutter ballet it was oh, right, like right, right. Years, it was 20 years old <laughs> you had to do time. that yeah. Dude, you had to do that. You had to. That's part of fucking. That's part of fucking. You know. That's part of. Our I team. was a. I was a little kid, man. It was like, uh -huh. basically, I was my first tour as a member of that band, and and John right. Oliva himself was way. He's the person that got me into drinking. He was way worse. Oh boy. Than <laughs> I was at that time. So we were just uh -huh. out. And we were having fun, but uh, I just remember the Thirsty Whale was, was was pretty. The stage was pretty small, so I, I was like, very well, small I stage, very small there. stage, but uh, very enthusiastic people and women. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> enthusiasm, a lot of enthusiasm in Chicago. What, now, what were you using as far as heads at the time? What was your tone at that time? I well, it's I that. always used um, the uh, we when I signed when we signed with EMI, I bought. Uh, seven JCM 800s and 12 super heavy duty birch ply Marshall bottoms with 80 watt Celestians and Doc uh, completely, you know, customized everything. So each Marshall head was about a, a 170 running uh -huh. continuous cool. So usually I would play through one or two uh, of those heads. <laughs> Nothing was louder than that. But, uh, well, but, was, but on the other side, gonna... Joey Sorry. was playing Joey was Joey would play through each cabinet had six six fifteens and four twelves. So he had four of those. So and he had like uh, so much that no matter how loud I was, he was louder. <laughs> the fucking guy was loud. All I heard was bass. I was playing from two stacks of marshals cranked. It was so fucking loud. And then when he started to play, it was like I, I couldn't hear the guitar. I said, how is this fucking, how is this humanly possible? It's the motorhead. <laughs> yeah. like, I was telling them. The I, I just, I, I, it, it's the, all I hear is him. All I hear is Joey. I mean, uh, so I, I, I said, I hope this fucking PA guy knows what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of thought you had the the eight hundred. I, I actually bought an eight hundred because I, I had seen one of your rigs on a stage, and that was my. Yeah, first I got two of them left. My, I still have the one I bought. I bought them. I bought an eight, an eight hundred. I think when I was sixteen, and it was wow. because of what, looking at your, your one of <laughs> picture of one of your stacks of amp. I was like, I, did you play them straight? Because I know that amp was was very, it, it didn't have a ton of lead tone in it. But my, I also had tiny little hands when I was. I've three. never used an effect. I've never used an effect in my life. Oh, Everything I, I played through straight through. You know, everything that, you know, of course, the preamps were decked. Uh, the tones were on 12 o'clock. Uh, you know, and, and the volumes were always on 7 or 8. Pretty, the fucking loud. I never, nothing, nothing would ever go on 10 because you have to have some sweet spots and you have to hit, you know. But, and Doc, Doc developed a way to link all the heads together. So, so when we're doing at the end of Battle Hymn, Sound the Charge into Glory Ride, everything gets turned on on stage. Everything, every <laughs> amp, every single thing is, you know, it just, you know, so that last feedback note that we hold, that we held for like 15 minutes, you know, it was just so loud and so, it was like drilling teeth. And that's when you saw the fucking, the, the roof shit coming down from the roof wherever we played. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, <laughs> very Wagnerian, you know, adding, yes. adding sound, not, you know, you're allowed to fucking begin with. But then you add sound at the end of the song just to make it even louder. You yeah. Know? And, but our shit was clean. The man of tone was clean. When we used to play with Motorhead, Joey and I would like say, "Are they? Do they have a a noise generator? Are they running a noise generator through the PA?" It sounded like there was like there was this no, there was this noise from from what it was was Lemmy had every instrument in the monitor. <laughs> everything everything was in the monitor mix right it was like wow it was wow it loud but, monitors <laughs> oh my god we always used to double the pa when we played with man or with motorhead everywhere we went and uh <laughs> clubs ritz everywhere so 
but but the man of war mix in the monitors is just drums and vocals completely t- and keyboard drums and vocals we never had guitar or bass i don't like our- my guitar in the monitor i like having it just out of the amplified code. yeah yeah we believe me the guitar and the bass were loud enough <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was a whole it was like the old school it was kind of like the old school way the way cream used to do it and and black sabbath and because that's what we used to talk about you know every band every guy had a yeah. ton of gear on stage and used it we used it you know and so that's that was the man of monitor mix completely 100 percent, 100 percent different than motorhead yeah uh, but two of the loudest bands in the world right in but their you own guys right, were, yes. you yeah. guys were the guinness book of world record holders for a while right we did two shows. We did one at Sundance Club in, in, in Long Island that people still come into me and go, I, it just, we, we doubled the PA. And then we went to the Ritz. Everyone knows the Ritz meeting. And we doubled the We brought in another PA. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> another PA to the Ritz. Wow. Yeah. And it was <laughs> so fucking loud. Everyone was just like, wow. It was, there was no, there was no uh, you know, you can't be that loud. There was no noise, you know, yeah. checking at them. That's the DVDs, metal, though, just know. being assholes. They fuck it. That's <laughs> right, man. That's right. But those were the days. Yeah, those yeah. Were the, those were the days. So, Ross, uh, anything you'd like to add? How, how do we, uh, before we wrap up tonight's show, and I'd like to, you know, if people want to check out the Ross the Boss band, how do we find you on the web? And well, all? very simple. You can go to Facebook, Ross the Boss band, Instagram, Ross the Boss. You can, you can check where we're at AFM, buy the okay. new record, Born of Fire. Yep. By all the freaking back catalog, the way to help all of us these days, the way to help musicians is buying physical, physical copies of records will help the band buy their T-shirts, buy, buy, you know, yes. not just mine, just, For just sure. everybody, you know, cause we need the help. The crews need the help. Everybody needs that. We have to keep, keep us going until we can go back on the road and do what we do. Though we, we, we've been put on earth to do is to, to please people and make music. And, uh, you know, that's how, that's how we need to be, you know, the crowd, you know, fans have to, and I think the fans are the, the metal fans are the most loyal. Yes. And they know, they know we need their help now. I agree with that, the, that the metal community is the most loyal at buying physical stuff, at least best, it shows in my people. store anyhow. But, uh, I really want to thank you for joining us tonight and, uh, giving us your time and, uh, Let's hope that we all get better soon and uh, we get back on the road and get to see bands. But yeah, support bands. We've got Dan from Possessed and Gruesome. We got Sympathy X from Mike. We got John from Incantation and Chris from TSO and Sabotage. And uh, please go out and buy some merch and uh, buy some stuff and keep metal alive and don't be a fucking poser. And listen don't be to a fucking poser. Anymore. Fuck the world. <laughs> Carry on. Thank you, Ross. <laughs> And uh, if you like what you saw tonight, please hit subscribe and uh, reach out to uh, Rock Fantasy, rockfantasy.com, and like the video. Tell us some of your favorite Man of War episodes. Tomorrow night, we will be back on the channel discussing the Ozzy era of Black Sabbath, and we will be talking about the Iron Maiden 40th anniversary on Killers later in the week. So please thank you for supporting the channel. Thanks for Ross, Ryan, Nick. Chris, Dan, and John. Thank you, folks. Thank Rock you guys. on. You guys.